morning and welcome to Church on the Couch here at Regal Heights. We thank you for joining us this morning and we are excited to continue our online journey and virtual reality with you. Um, if you would like to connect with us, um, feel free to touch base through YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Or if you would like a little bit more of a traditional way, please touch base through Regal Heights office at gmail.com. We want to thank all of our um, cheerful givers uh, here at Regal Heights. We so appreciate all your giving so that we can continue to do the ministry that God has called us to do here at Regal Heights. If you would like to participate um, in tithing or providing an offering, please feel free to email transfer uh, us at regalheightsoffice at gmail.com and there is no password required. If you would like to donate um, on a different form, please just give us an email and we would love to connect you uh, with other options. <laughs> Hi kids, I'm Jen Greer and this is Ben and we just want to invite you out to a celebration. We're so proud of you for all the hard work you've done uh, that we're going to be having an ice cream drive through celebration here at our church. Uh, so we'd love to see you come on out. Ben, you want to give them the logistics? Um, at our church parking lot, June 20th, yeah. 11 to 1. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. We'll see you there. Congrats! Bye. <laughs> All right, so we are going to uh, welcome in our worship team and we just invite you to worship at home. Really press in and see what God has for you today. And in our worship songs, we have a new song called The Stand. So please enjoy. And following worship, we will have Pastor Jason preach and Leah will be um, giving us a prayer.
deeper light in the darkness that is who you are and that is who you are. Well, let's take a moment and um, just spend some time praying to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, it is so good to um, be able to just have direct access to you, Lord, and, and to worship you, God, to be able to just speak with you and, and know that you hear us, that you want us to talk to you, Lord, and to have this attitude of prayer. Um, thank you, God, for your constant provision, Lord. Thank you for um, the summertime and, and new life and, and just a, a chance to sort of slow down, but to get out and enjoy your creation and to see your majesty, Father. I pray that you will speak through Pastor Jason as he brings the message today, Lord, and that um, people's hearts and minds would be open to receive what it is you want to teach them through your word today, God. We thank you so much that we have such free access to your word, God, because it is living and powerful and it changes lives. So we thank you, Father, and we praise you, and we ask for your favor and blessing to be upon this church and all of those who are watching. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, good morning, and welcome back to another Sunday of Church on the Couch. I can't wait till we can meet back in person, but I'm so thankful that we have this technology to help us to uh, work through our giftings and our mission via virtual reality. And as we do that, today we're going to be talking about spiritual gifts. We've been having them in our daily devotions. And so if you want to know a little bit more specifics about some of these uh, individual gifts and the roles that certain people play in the New Testament, I encourage you to go back uh, through some of our videos this week. Today we're going to be studying uh, the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. I'm going to give you a bit of background on that and to help you understand your spiritual gift. So the purpose for today is for you to be able to understand what your spiritual gift is and how to use it and what frame does God want us to use those together for the mission of Jesus Christ. Now, first and foremost, one of the main reasons that the Apostle Paul is teaching the Corinthians about spiritual gifts is to show them they all come from the one Holy Spirit. You'll see that as I read the scripture here shortly that the oneness is really the important thing. Think about it. Corinth was in Greece. And so with the Greek thought and the Greek religion pervasive around them, there was many different gods. It was a, what we call a polytheistic society. And so if you wanted this type of prayer answered, you would pray it to this, uh, this particular god. And if you wanted this, you'd go to another one. And, but this, so to make sure that we show that Christ is not divided, the Apostle Paul says, no, all the gifts come from the one gift giver as he determines not different spirits. There isn't a spirit of healing and a spirit of prophecy. It's the Holy Spirit who gives the individual giftings uh, to people. And sometimes he gives more than one gift and he gives them in varying degrees. For example, in a, in a leadership type of gift, uh, you know, God might give someone just a little bit of that gift to lead things because that's all he wants someone to do is to lead a small ministry well. And others, he might give uh, a great dose of the Holy Spirit and leadership because God wants that person to lead a nation. Uh, you just never know exactly what it is, uh, what God has for you, but we know that he who guides us will provide for us. And a major way that he provides is by giving us his Holy Spirit so that we can be strong in what we do in service to him. So today's message is on the fact that God wants to include you in his gospel message and he's going to empower you for the journey. I hope that is your takeaway. And that does lead us to our first point. The whole point, as I'm about to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, is that God has invested in you. By investing in you, that means God wants a return on that. So we should not just see this as gift, as something that we take and keep in a jar. Uh, we're told all throughout scripture to, when we have the gospel message, don't hide it under a jar. Make it the city on a hill. We're told that don't take uh, from the parable of the talents, we see that Jesus teaches saying, you know, uh, a rich man went away on a journey, but while he was gone, he had given a different sums of money according to their ability to three different servants. One he gave this much, one he gave a lesser amount, and one he gave a smaller amount. And he said, put this to work until I get back. When he returned, 
he commended the ones who put it to work and they had some gain on it. And there was one who was fearful for doing something wrong with it that he ended up just hiding uh, the one that he had and he gave it back to his master saying, here, I've given you back what you have given me. And the master, Jesus is saying, implying that he's the master in this parable, the master called him a wicked, lazy servant because he could have done something with it. And in the same way, God has given us a gift. Every Christian on earth has one and we are expected to use it. So that literally means that we uh, are those servants who have been entrusted with money in that instance to put it to work. God has given us giftings to put to work. And if we don't do anything with it, we should expect uh, some harsh discipline from God. I don't want you to be disciplined. I don't like the Lord's discipline. So we'll get busy together on what we can do to use our gifts for the glory of God. Here's the cool part to you. The number one reason I see why people don't use their gifts is they're afraid of doing something wrong, doing ministry in an incorrect way and possibly hurting someone else's feelings. I wanna encourage you that, that as we are gonna be learning about spiritual gifts, learning our spiritual gifts and how to use them, we'll learn to do so effectively according to our ability. Now, God's not gonna take someone who's never uh, experienced a spiritual gift and, and throw them right on the top of something. He often works us through things. And so you can be encouraged to know that the Holy Spirit who gives a gift along with the other people at church that are going to help us to walk our journeys out together are going to give you, uh, it's all going to give you and me opportunities to grow in our gift so that our gift never gets ahead of us, nor should it ever fall behind us, but that we should be growing in that gift so that we can use it for God's gospel message and he will lead us in the correct way of doing so if we are faithful. So I want to I want to encourage you to think of the word investment. You are an investment. You were purchased by Jesus Christ and now he has invested the Holy Spirit in your life with a gift to change lives and impact the population count of heaven. Think about that. That's the ultimate end result of your spiritual gift is that the work that the Holy Spirit is going to do through you is going to have a material change on the numbers of people that are in heaven forever. We are affecting eternity here. So it's not just about doing a ministry or, it, you know, the ministry is going to have an everlasting effect. And God has chosen you. He's so smart. So the gift that he gave you, he knows that you will use it in the proper way. And he knows how to train you in it. And it's going to be effective. That's another cool part of it, too, is the gifts that God give us. Uh, he knows that they're tailored to us according to our abilities. So whatever our gift may be, it is the best one that we have to do what we need to do. Sometimes we might want another gift, but that might mean that it's actually not something that is good for us, that we are gonna be able to perform our best in ministry with the gift that God has chosen because he's a gift giver and he's really smart and he's really compassionate. He is quite uh, a sophisticated strategist. So he knows what he's doing. So if you ever wondered why you have the gift that you have, we'll talk about that a bit later because God gives you as a gift to the church and he gives others as a gift to the church. And individually, we, we may not see the purpose or the magnitude of what our gift can, can contribute. But when we put them together in the church body that God has instituted and put together, then they often have a way of working together as an incredible team. And then we see what our place is. I'll give you a quick a story on that one. I knew of a lawyer. He is now uh, long older and retired, but uh, he always felt the call to ministry. But yet he still felt the call to law. So even when he was younger, he was praying, what should he do? And it was to go to law school. He went to law school. He was trying to figure out what his ministry was, but he, his practice blew up and he got really busy for decades. And he was always trying to say, like, where, God, am I supposed to use this gift of the law that you have given me? I've, I've done enough to be able to save enough that I can retire now, but uh, do you want me to give it all to a ministry or, or what should I do? And then he ran into a missionary who was telling him that one of the biggest causes of persecution in the world, beyond the violence that we're used to seeing, is that people are discrediting Christian pastors around the world by lying or uh, other kangaroo court methods to get pastors and missionaries behind bars. And as soon as he heard that, he knew that's what his life calling was. And that the decades practicing law was to get him sharp, smart, and well-funded for him to go help break missionaries out of jail around the world who are falsely imprisoned under false pretenses. Isn't that incredible? Sometimes the seeds that God is sowing in our life today might be for a fruit or a season uh, decades yet to come. 
And so this man was able to retire early and he spent decades helping people. Isn't that wonderful? God can use us in incredible ways. And even the things that you're doing in life that might not seem so spiritual right now will be one day employed in God's service. So let's see how we can use our giftings to become more skilled at what we are good at and find ways as a team under Christ in the church to use them more effectively. So that first point that I wanted to share with you today is that God has invested in you the gift of the Holy Spirit, and he does expect us to use it, and he promises a wonderful return. So let's read 1 Corinthians 12 here right now, and then I'll go on to the second and third point of this uh, passage and message, and then we will uh, become better students of Jesus Christ. So here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it begins with the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, saying, Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I don't want you to be ignorant. Because you know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray by mute idols. Therefore I tell you that nobody who's speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but the same God works in all of them. One God not many gods. Uh, One good, powerful God who has many abilities to empower and impart on each of us. Now to each one of us, the manifestation of the Spirit has been given for the common good. That's a powerful statement because it is universal to each one of us. Everyone has at least one spiritual gift given by God, and it's so that we can contribute to the common good. That's the purpose. So the gift is not for our glory. The gift is for God's glory. For his common purpose. To the one there is given a spirit, a message of wisdom, to another message uh, of knowledge by means of the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues or languages, as, uh, and still others to interpret those tongues, languages. All these work in the one and the same spirit, and he gives to each of them just as he determines. So the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though through all of its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we we were all baptized by the one spirit into the one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free. We were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, it would not be for that reason that it would cease to be a part of the body. And if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, uh, it would not then cease to be a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would its sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged all the parts in the body every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts that the body that seem weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think of are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. Why are presentable parts need no special treatment? But God has combined the members of the body and has given greatest honor to the parts that lacked it. And so there should be no division in the body at all, but that its parts should have an equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, then all parts rejoice with it. Now you are in the body of Christ, and each of you is part of it. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those who are able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those with speaking in different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Rhetorical question to the answer, which is no. Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all miracle workers? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? The answer, no. But eagerly desire the greater gifts. Now, when we say that last closing phrase, where he says, uh, seek the greater gifts, 
Now, you might be went through that list and in your mind said, what does the greater gift mean? Is it one of healing, of tongues, of power, of wisdom, prophecy? What is it? What we learn is that what can build up the body of Christ the best is the greater gift. What can we do to help people to come to Christ in their faith and to grow? That's the greater gift. Not the greater gift of which one has the most pizzazz and which one is the coolest to have to show off amongst your friends. No, it is about the greater gifts. The way that God understands what is greater is what is more better for the common good because that's the purpose he gives to us. And so when we realize that the spiritual gifts uh, are for the building up of the church, that we will, fall, we will all therefore be part of the church. And if you are a part of the church, then guess what gifts are available to you? The gifts were given to the church because they're given to the church. That means they're going to exist for the church age. These gifts just did not stop uh, after the first apostles died. Otherwise, why would Paul be teaching a whole new church who was going to live long after him that these gifts uh, are going to end? No, the Holy Spirit is going to continue to do this through the entire church age, and the purpose is to build the church. Is the church finished? Is the gospel uh, been preached to all nations yet? Has Christ returned? No? Then there's still use for the church. And the local church is said to be seen as the local, or as the local church is the hope of the world. Why? Because we are the ones that carry the gospel and, and do works of service to help people uh, to know God, to love him, to have justice and equality in our lives, that we are the beacon in every corner and every place of this world. And we need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to be able to have such a heavy mandate. We would never be able to do it on our own. God knew that. That's why we celebrate him at Christmas time as Emmanuel, God with us. It's not God just above us, and he is above us, but it's God with us. He's with us in the trenches. He wants this work to be done. He is proud to include us in his salvation plan. You know, little children love to go to work with their parents just to see what they do. And I think it's wonderful that we get to go to work with our Father in heaven every day. He has chosen to invite us along in the journey of salvation, that we may participate in it. Now, we can't participate in the sense of giving of salvation because that alone comes from Christ, but we can be a part in carrying the Christ to others. Think about it. Just at Easter time, we celebrate Jesus coming into uh, Jerusalem on a donkey. We are that donkey. Uh, that might sound a little uh, quip or trite for some people, but it is so true. That donkey was carrying the Christ and fulfilling prophecy and delivering him into the temple. And if we are faithful, we can carry the Christ as well too. Now think about this. Now imagine people laying down their coats. Imagine people laying down the palm branches. And that donkey starts to think, wow, look at all the attention that I'm being paid. I must be something special. And then if that donkey were ever to rear up and try to stand up to be able to wave to everybody, what would then happen? He would have knocked off the Christ, which was what was giving him the attention in the first place. That gives us an understanding of what our attitude should be when we are serving with God's power. He gives us power, we're carrying the Christ. But when people start to say, wow, you did a great job at that ministry serving that person. Or wow, look at, let's not be the donkey that stands up, but just points up. God gave me a gift he is deserving of all the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's what we say when God does miraculous things through each of us, is we just give the glory back to God. And if we are proven that we are faithful with little and we don't let the power of the Holy Spirit get to our heads, then God will grow us and it will continue to have more power in our life every day. So how we should feel about this is that we are indispensable. We belong. You belong. God has chosen to invite us along with this journey, and we belong to him and each other. Isn't that wonderful? Nobody is independent. We independently do things, but we do them together as a team. And as much as my hand can't do much if it's not connected to my arm, my arm might think it doesn't do a whole lot, but it's what's in between my hand and my brain that tells us what we should do. In the same way, we all have important parts. We do belong, no matter if you don't think you do or not. You are an integral part and salvation would not be going out the way that it is without you. I promise you that. God has created the best conditions for the gospel message to go out. So the gift that you have is the best one that you could have for God's glory. Remember back when we talked about that it's uh, in some of our devotions that you were born at such a time as this is because this is the best time that you could ever been born in the history of the world to come to faith and to use your faith. It's also the best place on the earth where you could be. If you were born anywhere else or any when else, it would be harder than it is today. 
So I want to encourage you with the investment of the gift of the Holy Spirit and the spiritual gifts that are in us, that we use them here now, that this is the easiest it's going to be for us because God knows how to arrange the parts of a church as the same way he knows how to arrange the parts of a body. So the best feeling we could ever get about this is that we belong. How, how incredible is it that like, God just did not have to include us in anything? When we sinned, he could have just left us alone, but to his glory and, and to show his everlasting patience and love for us, he has given us mercy through Jesus Christ. And the fact that he wants to include us, uh, it just makes us feel so special. I hope you feel that you are special, that, that God just didn't invest in you like you're somehow you're a laborer in his vineyard that he doesn't care about. He has very carefully planned your life. He has very carefully planned when and where you live. And he has very carefully planned the spiritual gift he gave you, not to break you, but to help you to thrive and to grow and to be a part of something greater than you could be on your own. We belong, and God has crafted us at such a time as this to be the hands and feet of Christ on the earth. So I pray that you can join with me as, uh, we, as we are eventually going to be able to restart some of our ministry to the poor. Thankfully, much of our help has been able to still be able to happen out to other organizations that are helping those in need or um, in, in grave circumstances. So we're going to continue to do that and create new ministries and have a new place for everybody. Because you know what? Your gift does belong at the church and should be used in any local church. That is really what we are, is a group of varying people, just like uh, 1 Corinthians 12 says, eyes, ears, noses, mouths, that together we can form something greater than we could on our own. How much could your ear survive just on its own? It never could. The same way as you, you, could, you should never understand to think that, you know, maybe if you, if you are um, a missionary who has been thrown in jail for your beliefs, then yes, you have to be independent in your prayers because nobody's there helping you. But in, real, in realistic times, you know, God wants us to meet together for this reason, because not everybody's near, not everybody is an eye, not everybody is a mouth, which means you need me and I need you to grow in faith, not just the scriptures and not just prayer. When some people say, hey, I can have church at home just by myself, uh, we have to in this particular case because of a pandemic, but we're still be able to connect. I'm using your gift, you're using my gift right now. Uh, this is how things work. And God has employed us to do this, to put us together for his holy work and the fulfillment of each of our hearts. How wonderful it is when we get together and everybody uses their particular spiritual gift and we see the results of the ministry. It is so encouraging and it gives us not only uh, self-esteem, not that we should do things to seek that, but it gives us a sense of self-worth. It gives us a thankfulness and a love for God and each other. And God binds us all together in unity. I think it is, it's just wonderful that how God is so smart and he knows how to build his church and use his people. So I pray that you know that you are so highly valued, and not just by me, but by God, that he has you here, and I'm thankful that we are friends to be able to do ministry together with, and that there would never be an easier time for us individually and corporately than now what God has provided. I think that's pretty cool. And so one last thing on point two of what we should be feeling about this isn't just that we belong. It's that when we use our spiritual gift, we're actually partaking in worship. Now, in Romans 12, he talks about spiritual gifts as well. But he says, hey, guys, I don't want you to be conformed to the wickedness that's in the world, but be renewed in your mind by the Holy Scriptures and by Jesus Christ. And let that be your, our service, be uh, a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. God wants us to be holy and pleasing to him and serving him. And when you are using your spiritual gift, you are worshiping him indeed. We know that we often think that worship is music, that when we sing or pray that that is worship, but when we are using the Holy Spirit, the gift that he has given us to help others, we are worshiping him for how he has empowered us. I hope you realize that. So some of the more mundane things a lot of people don't feel are very spiritual. Some people don't think dropping off a bag of food to somebody who needs it is all that spiritual. Some people might not think coming to clean a church is not that spiritual. But if we're using our gifts, whether they're perceived to be uh, admirable by people in the world or not, whether they be prophecy or workers of miracles, or whether it's those who just make sure that everybody has enough food to eat, all of it is spiritual. All of it is a spiritual gift. All of it will be rewarded in heaven, and all of it is an act of worship. Anything you do for the Lord is in of itself an act of worship. So now, what do we do with all this? 
So now we learn that God has, uh, the first two points of this message are that God has invested in you and he expects a return. That is a whole lot more happy than that sounds, because <laughs> we think the way that I just phrased it there is that there's punishment or whatnot involved. But the point is, that's an exciting thing. If somebody invested in you a million dollars and said, go make a bunch more money with it, you would probably shout woohoo and then go do it. Uh, we've been given something greater. We've been given a gift from the Holy Spirit and he proudly and wants us enthusiastically to use it for his good and that he will lead us along the way to make sure that it makes a return and that, that we don't waste it and that we don't spend it. And uh, so as we use it, I want to tell you what we can do about that. So the first is understanding that one, he has invested in you. Can you believe it? Heaven has invested in you. God has invested in me and you. I think that's crazy. That'd be like, nothing that it would even compare would be a billionaire investing in a little tiny mom and pop shop thinking because it's the greatest thing ever. You say, why would a billionaire ever want to invest in a little uh, company like ours? But maybe that billionaire sees something that that mom and pop business doesn't. That what they have has real value and that with, the, with that investment can make that idea blossom. And in the same way, you might think like, who am I that heaven would bestow such a thing to me. God sees something. He loves you so much, and he is investing in you far better gifts than a billionaire could ever dream of doing. And then by doing so, he is happily going to help what, how he has created you to make an incredible happening on the earth. You have a purpose that can only be fully fulfilled with God empowering it. Let me say that again. Everybody on earth is trying to find out why am I here. Everyone on earth is trying to figure out what's my purpose. And instead of just generic things of like, well, it's to come to faith and go to heaven. That's true. But you cannot, your individual purpose, your assignment here on the earth cannot be done without the investment of the Holy Spirit and your cooperation thereof. And then you will fulfill your purpose and the destiny that God has created for you will come forth out of you in such powerful ways. So I want to encourage you that this is the most exciting thing you can do is find your spiritual gift and use it and grow in it. I know it's a lot of work. I know it's a lot of effort. But the, the benefits to it are absolutely astounding for us forever in heaven. That we get to see God at work in front of us right now. That's another thing. Everybody wishes they could see God. Use your spiritual gift and use it in ministry in conjunction with others. And you'll see God on a daily basis. This is so encouraging to know that this is how, how he works. If you want to know where God is uh, and want to know what he looks like, go to where he is. Where is he? He's at work to this very day, making sure that the gospel that came to us doesn't stay with us, but that it goes out from us. So I want to encourage you that God saw something worth investing in, and we need to have that point nailed down that he invested in us in a good way, in an enthusiastic way, because we belong, because we are loved by him, and he has a destiny for you that is going to be empowered by heaven. Don't get empowered by things of sugar and caffeine, things that the world can provide. Get empowered by the Holy Spirit and you will be incredibly effective. And a lasting change will, will just ripple throughout the centuries to come. And so what do we do about all this? Here are some very practical steps for you to take. You might not even know what your spiritual gift is yet, and I'm going to help you to find it because God is going to help us to find it. The first thing is we can push on doors in ministry. When you're in a church, you might not know what you're called to do, so you might want to shadow somebody else. Find some other leaders in the church. Say, hey, can I shadow you for a bit? I'm trying to figure out my spiritual gift. You might see that you have a love for babies, so you're called to the nursery. You might see that you have a love for administration, so you go help out in the church office. You might find that you are uh, someone who likes to make sure that the worship atmosphere is, is clean and hygienic and, you know, maybe the calling of cleaning. It happens. It happens. Uh, maybe you have the gift of hospitality where you just really love uh, helping people to come in and relax and enjoy a good meal. Um, what I want to encourage you on is don't go jump off the deep end because God's going to grow you in it. So start small, push on doors, see where God, when you're praying, where he quickens your mind to, and other people that may be similar gifted to you, follow them. And it's okay to say, hey, I'm going to volunteer for this ministry for a little while, and then Quit that and go do something else. That doesn't make you a quitter. You're finding your spiritual gift. You might be moving around to try to find a place and a team to use that spiritual gift. And then remember Jesus' words, he who is faithful with little will be given much. So the first thing you need to do is try to find your gift or gifts and then start to grow in them. And let God bring the assignments on an increased level as you get better and better. Think about it. We get more permissions in, in adulthood as uh, we grow through our teen years 
you know, whether we don't let kids use knives when they're little, of course not. But then as we learn how to use our hands and feet properly, and as we learn the use of proper tools, we are allowed to then use even greater tools, even right into nail guns and things like that. So I want to encourage you that God is going to start you off small. He just will. He's, he's not going to give you something that's going to make you crash. But then he's going to grow you in it, and he expects it to grow, and he expects you to grow. And then he will bring the next step in your ministry as he sees fit and as you grow. Those two go together, his plan and our cooperation with that plan. So remember, he who's faithful with little will be given much. So be as faithful as you can with what you have entrusted to you right now, and then watch the doors of heaven open. The next thing is to join a team where you can use your gifts. Uh, I've seen people have actually not been a proper fit for a particular church because there was already a bunch of people that did one thing. You know, if we, if we could even look at saying like, um, you know, we have a loving team and a friendship, but that's not all church is. It isn't just a club where we meet together. It's where we use our gift and grow in our gifts and use our gifts. And there may be a particular gift that can't be used in a local church. There's been times where people have come to our church because they weren't a particular fit in ministry somewhere else. And there was uh, others that um, when talking with saying, hey, you know what, I think that possibly your gift might be in this neighborhood over here. And uh, not that I say that I want people to come from other churches or people to leave from here and go to others, but finding the team that you're on is important. Praying for the right team is important for you to use your gifts because God has a place for you. It might be to take you out of your comfort zone. It might not be in the context of a local church. It could be a homeless shelter. It could be providing accounting advice uh, for the poor to help them to find budgets and live within their means and to make sure that they don't get entrapped by debt. Um, that might be just in your, in your workplace. You could be an accountant doing that. You're helping people and you're providing for your family. How cool is that? You know, God can do many things at once and he can teach us to do many things at once as well. So make sure you understand the ministry too, not just the gift, but what you are called to do and where you are called to do it. I knew someone who was, uh, they thought they were supposed to be a pastor, so they did all the training for that, but then they found out uh, later in life they were to be a, a missionary. Well, guess what? A pastor is just a missionary on the move. And, uh, and, but they were faithful with what they had, and they prepared for it, and God revealed the steps as it came up. And the best part of why the local church is the hope of the world is simply because it, it, it's the team that God has decided. You know, a lot of people say they don't like organized religion. Uh, and what they really mean is they don't like disorganized religion, where people put position and power and politics rule instead of the gospel. God instituted his church and he organized it. To say that there is an eye, an ear, a nose, and a mouth in this passage, and that makes up the one body, that is organized. Your body is organized. The senses you have are organized. The ministry we have is organized. So what we really need to make sure is that we are the most organized we can possibly be under heaven. And those with the gift of leadership and administration can help us keep it straight and help keep church from becoming polluted by the world. And the purpose is then when we can have a good team of organized religion, what happens is we become productive. In the same way in assembly line, if everybody does their job just right, a beautiful product comes out of the end. One person doesn't do it all, but together it all gets done. And that's exactly what it is like here at your local church. And then so with that, if each local church were to organize in such a way to find their spiritual gifts, to realize that God has invested in them and that we belong and that we can grow in these gifts and spread the mission of Jesus Christ into the world, we are in effect changing the world one little small church at a time. And so that I pray that as we uh, go into the days ahead, that we would look about how we can be in unity of churches and unity of members within churches so that we can be a, a well-oiled machine empowered by the Holy Spirit, giving gifts that are totally awesome to help us to affect the world for the purpose of this, that Jesus Christ died according to the scriptures and was resurrected by his own power. And he offers the forgiveness of sin. He proved that he has the power over life and death. So this gospel that has come to us, he promises that if we follow in his footsteps, if we follow his teaching and trust in his salvation purchased on the cross, that we will spend forever eternity with him in heaven. And the promise that we learned at Pentecost is that he will send the Holy Spirit who will bring times of refreshing and empower us to be able to go out into a broken world with power and with majesty to see that the gospel is truly a life-changing event in all of our lives and that God wants everyone to hear that gospel and come to faith. And may we organize rightly together to see that 
wonderful gospel message is going to go on, that we pass the baton, that we are faithful servants in our generation, that make sure that as many people can know about the gospel as possible, that we show them what real fellowship is, what real unity is, even when we agree and disagree, but that we are committed together in love and in power, we will go out and display that even as imperfect vessels, we present and carry, just like that donkey, the perfect Christ. And so I pray that this helps you in your journey. We're going to be talking about spiritual gifts again next week. And, uh, but as we continue to move in this direction, I pray that you realize that you do have a very important gift. You do have a very important role to play. And I pray that you may find it and use it and that you would have the joy of the Lord in your heart to know that heaven thought you were worth saving, that God thought you were worth investing in because he sees something in you. There's a destiny in you. You won't fulfill it any other way. Uh, why don't we close in prayer? Heavenly Father, God, I thank you that you did not leave us as orphans. Man, you could have left us so long ago for the mistakes we do. You are holy and we are not. And yet you still turn your face towards us. And you clean us up and you conform us to the likeness of your son. So Father, we pray that you would put on our hearts and minds right now. For those that don't know what their spiritual gift is. Lord, I pray that everyone who is listening, that if there's someone who is yet to receive salvation, that that would be the first gift that they receive. Just a simple acknowledgement that you've taught us in Romans, that if we acknowledge who you are and believe that God rose you from the dead and that you died for us, that we are saved. And so, Lord, I pray that somebody has just made that declaration of faith right now. And, Lord, I pray you would bring to our minds what our spiritual gifts are, that you would show us, that you would surround us with people of like giftings, not so that we can clump up, but so that we can learn together. And that, Lord, that we may we then uh, join a local church. May we get together, because the local church is really just a team of people empowered by you, taking your gospel message out. So God, lead us to the right church and help us to be a good team that recognizes our extreme differences, but they're all empowered by you and that we all belong and that we all have use in your kingdom. And Lord, I'd want to thank you for letting us be a part of your journey. You didn't have to do that. You could have done it on your own, or you actually could have done nothing. But Lord, you decided to include us in your journey, and that we get to be, in some small way, an important part of all of that. And for that, we thank you. And for that, we worship you. And Lord, we know you wouldn't give us a gift that we weren't able to properly use. So help us to be trainable. And help us to expect more, that as we grow, you're going to do more. Not for our glory, but for yours. And God, please keep our feet grounded. And let us not ever be like the donkey carrying you and standing up. And so you fall off. God, help us to keep our feet family firmly on the rock. Thank you that you've let us in on this. I can't, I can't tell you how, uh, what a privilege it is that we get to be a part of your salvation plan. So, Father, we pray for unity in this world. We pray that we would be able to do new ministry in the world. And then, God, I pray that those that are suffering loneliness, because, God, we were, you called us to be together. And this self-isolation is difficult. But, Father, I pray that you, who are everywhere, would be our very present comfort in time of need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. never failing let mercy fall on me everyone needs forgiveness kindness of a savior the hope of nations savior he can move the my God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the
hit me as you find me All my fears and failures Fill my life again Give my life to follow Everything I believe in Now I surrender singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, you can move the mountains. My God, you're mighty to save. Yes, you're mighty forever author of salvation you rose and conquered the grave yes you conquered the Thank you for tuning in to Church on the Couch. I hope today's word and worship have blessed you here today, and we look forward to the days ahead when we can meet. If you were blessed by this in any way, please be a blessing to others and just hit that share button. And then we will be together again soon where we can share the gospel together as one big team empowered by God that's going to affect change on the world and where we each individually find out what our destiny really is. Thank you and God bless. Amen.